Floss Tube. Today is Tuesday, June the 8th, 2021. This is my channel, Proverbs 3122. My name is Shelly, and welcome to new subscribers. I've still been getting um, a few, you know, every week trickling in, so I appreciate all you guys who are here, and um, if you're new, I hope you see something that you like and you stick around, subscribe and like and all those good things. Comment. I love um, the interaction between, you know, my viewers and the comments. Um, all my returning subscribers, thanks for hanging in there with me <laughs> all the time. I appreciate you guys so much. Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> This is a channel about quilting, obviously, the wall behind me. Um, mostly cross-stitch, but some quilting. I, you know, for a while there, my balance as far as my hobbies between the cross-stitch and the quilting was very heavily toward um, cross-stitch. And, you know, I was thinking about it this morning. The quilt right here on the wall behind me, the sailboat quilt, was supposed to be for my dad, and I wanted to make it for him for Father's Day 2020. Um, the pandemic happened. I worked for an urgent care at that time, and so my stress level was through the roof. And so quilting kind of really took a back seat because I just needed something that was totally relaxing. I mean, I love quilting and everything, but it's, you know, you have to concentrate. <laughs> um and so I think that's why, you know, I, I put that quilt aside. Unfortunately, my dad passed in August of 2020. So, um, you know, I'll never be able to give it to him. So, but I am going to finish it and give it to my older brother. <clears throat> so um, anyway, you know, my, my balance of my hobbies was more towards cross-stitch. I would say it's it was real heavy towards cross stitch. I would say currently it's not quite even, but you know, cross stitch is still a little bit more than quilting, but the quilting's kind of making a little bit of a resurgence. So, um, yeah, anyway, so, uh, life update, not much going on here today. I had quilt guild, um, this morning. They are, um, our numbers are coming back up and they're um, planning to have, we're planning to have a quilt show next April. And I'll be sure to, you know, be sure to share information on that as it gets closer. Um, we are planning to go to a shop in Tennessee that I've never been to. I've heard lots of things about it. I really wish that I had gone before because I've heard, you know, the old place that she was in, the name of the shop is Stitcher's Garden. If you know anything about that shop, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, she's recently moved her shop, though, and she's now in an old furniture store. <laughs> so some of us are going this Friday, and then some of us are going later in the month on a Saturday. I'm hoping that I'm able to go Friday um, with having Guild today and then my Stitchy Meetup from 2 to 7 on Thursday. It may be kind of iffy to where I'll feel good enough to go on Friday, but hopefully I will because I've never been before. So I'm excited to go check that place out. Um, my son-in-law is having his surgery tomorrow, and so the boys are coming to spend the night tonight, and I'll have them tomorrow. Nathan's got a couple of games tomorrow, uh, late morning, early afternoon. So I'll have to um, <clears throat> show her, chauffeur him to those things. So, um, yeah, that's all that's going on around here. So when I went to Quilt, quilt Guild this morning, I did bring some of the stuff that I've been um, stitching. You've seen it in recent videos, but I did... Um, bring I've been working still on these pineapple blocks <clears throat> so while I had them um, off my design wall I figured I would put them just on a little design board so you could see them up close so um, yeah that you know the the quilt pattern calls for these to be sashed in the middle 
I really don't know why. I guess because they were trying to, you know, it was part of a sew sampler box. So they only had two charm packs in with it. And so to make the quilt a little bit bigger, they sashed it. I did go ahead and buy a, um, another charm pack. Not the same exact line, but uh, this is Allison Glass's Sunprint lines. And she pretty much, like every year, she makes one. So I bought, you know, <clears throat> I had the two that were in the box. And then I bought, I want to say just one more, one more of a newer version of Sunprint. But I think they all work, you know, pretty good together. And I just love this little diamond that comes up in the middle and then these parts right here that make the little pineapple shape. I love it. And then this is another block. These take quite a while to make and <clears throat> they are paper pieced. And so um, it's not really conducive to piecing something else as a leader and ender because you're on the paper. So that's all that I've been doing the last couple of times I'm sewn is just doing those blocks. So, okay, a lot of breath. So I got stuff ready and then I realized that there was a couple of things that I hadn't pulled out um, that I stitched on after my last update, you know, my vlog on Saturday. Um, things that I've stitched on since then, I didn't have those pulled, pulled out. And unfortunately, I don't have any more boards, but we'll make do with what we got. So um, for the um, cross-stitch camp stitch-along type of thing, um, you pick your own pattern. And so I chose one of the ones from Jelly Bean Jubilee by Brenda Gervais. And I'm stitching this little one right here, Jelly Bean Delivery. So cute. And I'm stitching it on some 32 count Murano Carré and the, um, the colorway or design is Fleur. That's from Hobby Lobby. And <clears throat> I'll try to use this, this fabric for as many of them as I can. Um, but this is just a little small start that I got on that, um, Saturday evening. And I'm using DMC's, um, I think pretty much the call for, maybe some substitutions if I didn't have, um, what they called for. I've just substituted something that was close to it. So basically, I'm planning to stitch on these, this piece, on Tuesdays and Saturdays. And so, um, hopefully my goal is to have it finished by the end of the month. And I think I won't have any problem doing that, because it really does stitch up pretty fast. And then, um, this past weekend, the first weekend of every month, um, I'm doing the BBD Weekend Sal with Brenda and Laura from Brenda and the Serial Starter. And so I'm working on this stocking right here from the Home for the Holidays Blackbird book. And I'm stitching this on a piece of 36 count um, linen hand dyed by me. <clears throat> And so the last time I showed this, I had, I want to say I had um, this, the ABC, and then this row right here done. So I had that extra little stitch that's on the pattern on the C. I took that out, and, um, you know, all I had to do was just pull out the tail and take that stitch out and then re-bury the tail. So I got that done. I got this row done, this little border done, divider, I mean, and then started on this motif down at the bottom. So I think I got a good bit done. And these are the flosses that I'm using. Um, 
I think this this color right here is the only call for the rest of them I just substituted my own and I'm doing um, like I want to say these borders called for the same as the letters and I've changed it to do um, a different color this little um, motif right here I'm not sure why they um, like I know when it gets down to here, you know, the stocking start, shape starts uh, affecting the design, but up here it doesn't. But they still made one last stitch right here on this arm of this star. And I did, you know, look at the pattern, look at the model, and they're stitched like that. But I'm not sure why they had to cut that one um, so close. So those are the two things that I um, had forgot to pull. And so this starting this week, I'm stitching on a couple of sows. And so one of those is uh, Flea Market Flowers, <clears throat> which is by Lori Holt. And it's a stitch along hosted by Fat Quarter Shop. I'm not going to keep caught up on it. I know I'm not because it really, I stitch really slow and it's, it's, it takes a while. So, uh, but I did make some progress on it last night. So now if I was stitching on only this, you know, every day, then I would be able to keep up, but I'm not able to keep up because I, I stitched on it, you know, like I'll stitch on it like three days this week and then put it aside to stitch on some other sow. I got too many sows is what I'm trying to say. So this is a piece of 36 count hand dye by me. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. And so I filled in some more of these little petals on this flower. I got really tired of stitching on that. And so um, I decided to, you know, take the border down and get over here and then start on these, this blue flower right here, which I think is so pretty. So I'm not using the called for. Um, I think the only things that are called for are these two and then this one, which are DMC. Um, but the rest of them I substituted um, different colors, mostly fancy floss, over dyed flosses. And I am changing the... Um, these brown flowers like here and here and here those will be um, stitched in purple instead these purples right here this is pickled beets which is my absolutely favorite 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 purple floss i love it so yeah, we'll see how much I can get done stitching on this, you know, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. <clears throat> then I'm stitching on a um, daily focus piece, which is Elizabeth Weston from Hands Across the Sea. And, whew. I'm still on that over one stuff and man, it's, it's tough. <clears throat> so I made a mistake on the U it's out of line with the other letters or maybe the O I don't know which one is, but anyway, I was like, I'm not frogging it. Frogging over one on 36 count is not fun. <laughs> um, stitching on 36 count over one is not fun either. But um, I left it. I mean, by the time the whole thing is done, I'm pretty sure you're not going to be able to spot that, you know, that one little letter is out of place. So this fabric is a 36 count Edinburgh linen that um, Devin over at Strawberry Lane on Etsy hand dyed for me. And I'm stitching with one strand of floss over two threads except for the over one parts um i've been forgetting to say what what um 
like if I'm doing one over one, one over two, or two over two, or anything like that. So if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. I'll try to do it from here on out. But I'm using the Call for DMC flosses on this piece, which is just gorgeous. Drill worthy colors. And so <clears throat> that over one stuff, I'm telling y'all, it's 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 not for the faint of heart. <laughs> it's the first time I've done over one. I can't believe people that do over one on 46 and 50 count. Jeez. Um, so, um, my weekly focus piece, if you're new here, I have a weekly focus piece that I try to stitch on every day. And let's see, this week, um, I used the Tiny Decisions, um, wheel app. And this week the wheel chose for me, um, the linen and threads, um, mystery stitch along from 2020 this is a free um pattern that you can get over at um, linen and threads website and this is the whole um the whole pattern this is like release 12 and so you get it you know a few little things every month and i think i'm on um i am on Let's see. I'm on part seven. So I've got a ways to go. But I did work on this last night. And I'm working on this little bird right here. It's so cute. And last night when I was stitching, I just started outlining parts. And then I can just go back in and fill it in. So, um... This is a 14 count oatmeal Ada that I'm stitching with uh, DMC variegated. Um, well, <laughs> my tag is not marked, but it's 4211. And I'm stitching with two strands of floss over one thread of the Ada. So this is what I've got done um, so far. I was really happy that the wheel chose that I haven't worked on it in a while and I really like it a lot. So um, yesterday was Merry Monday where I work on a Christmas pattern. And so I had um, I had to finish the back stitching on this number seven on the shabby advent calendar pattern. And so I got that done just in a matter of, you know, 15 minutes last night. So I'm stitching these on 18 count um, natural star linen from Hobby Lobby. I'm using two strands of floss over one Ada thread and then these are the flosses that I'm using. Some of them are called for, most are not. Um, a lot of this pattern was supposed to be stitched in white. Like all of the gray on this pattern is all supposed to be white. And I just, I couldn't do that. So I changed it up and added some purples and pinks. So now I'll um, put this pattern away for the rest of June. Since I finished that one. And then I'll work on some other Christmas, Christmas patterns on each Monday. Um, and then at the beginning of July, the first Monday, I will pull out number six. I'm working on them in reverse order. So number six will come out in, Jan in July, and I'll work on it every Monday until it's finished. Hopefully just, you know, two Mondays. I'm hoping I can get them done in two Mondays. So another thing that I participate in is um, the Magazine Monthly Challenge Group which is a group on Facebook where um, we they choose a theme and then an acrostic for each month and you pick whatever pattern magazine patterns you want to use 
Um, some people don't do don't don't use magazine patterns. They'll just use any patterns that they have that fit the acrostic or the theme. I'm doing my magazines, so um, and I, I access all of my magazines through Readly, except for Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher, which I've just done a digital um, subscription to that one. But um, I'm working on this pattern right here. This is a new star for me. And it's called Summer Cuttings. And it is, um, it's from Cross Stitcher Magazine, Summer 2021 issue. It's designed by Cheryl McKinnon, who is Tiny Modernist. A lot of the patterns that I pick from magazines are by her. You know, not on purpose. It just must really like her, um, her style. So I, um, this is a 28 count Cashel in the color Petrol Blue. I didn't have that and I was going to hand dye a piece, um, to, to mimic it. And I got my stuff out yesterday to dye and I was like, well, I don't have to do it in blue. Can you guess what I did it in? I know all of my returning people can. So I did a pink, I mean, a uh, purple instead. So I dyed this piece of, um, this is a 28 count, the Irish linen that I'd gotten from Michael's a while back. It's, um, the color is tea dyed, factory tea dyed. And so it wasn't white when I started it. It was, you know, tea dyed. So, um, I wasn't sure how it was going to come out, but I love the way it came out. So I did eggplant and a little bit of fuchsia dye, writ dye. So this is the flat part, which I've started stitching. And I'm using, um, these are the flosses. Some are called for, some are um, alternatives that I had in my stash. And then this is the other piece um, that will be the, the case. It's a scissors case, so. Beautiful. Love it. That's the first time I've dyed a purple piece. So I did, um, yesterday I put everything kitted up and put it on these little floss tags that I had, um, I talked about on my last video. These are the ones that I had, um, adhered the scrapbook paper to to um cardstock and my um Fisker's tag punch wouldn't punch through both of them and so I did pick up another um another punch I got this off of Amazon and I will link it below um that's the brand I had never heard of them before but um I want to say that it said that it would punch from like 110 pound to 125 pound. So pretty, pretty beefy um, and pretty large. It's bigger than the other one that I had, which I like a lot more. So I just went ahead and, and punched those out. And then I did a little piece of jewelry for it. And... I actually took a picture of the, a screenshot of the pattern, the completed pattern, the model, and printed it out on some photo paper and added it into this little oval, um, this little oval pendant. So, um, I'll show y'all on um, I think my last video, I got that one inch, um, one inch Fisker's hole punch, um, because I messed up my other one inch hole punch that I had by punching a sticker <laughs> with it. Um, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't come undone. It wouldn't release. So I bought that Fisker's one. I'm just here to say Fisker's. I don't know. Maybe y'all have had better luck, but to me it's crap. Because I tried to hole punch these with both layers. It wouldn't even touch it. 
wouldn't even touch it. So I had to use a smaller punch that I already had. I like to do these one inch. So it's big, you know, to put a whole skein of floss if you need to. Um, so, I mean, I, the other set of punches that I had is like three little um, different sizes in a little pack that I got off of Amazon for hardly anything. I mean, they're, you know, they're not the best quality, but it punched through this no problem. So I don't know what's the deal with Fiskars, but, I, you know, I don't know. I probably will try to find a one inch punch by this company and, and get that instead. That's, oh, I did win a door prize at Quilt Guild this morning, and so um, they had this hoop by Thimble Lady, which I've seen her videos before, and I really wanted to try her method, and so um, I think one of our members is clearing out because she's moving states, and so um, she brought a bunch of stuff, and so she had this this hoop on the giveaway table, so I immediately went to that and, and snatched it up. So that's all I've got for today. That's 30 minutes worth. Um, yeah, I'll see y'all in a few days when I've got some more stuff to show. Bye, everyone. Today is Thursday, June the 10th, and I'm here to do a little stitchy update. Um, show you what I've been stitching in the last couple of days. So, um, my son-in-law's surgery went very well. They, um, they said he only had a very small tear in the cuff, the rotator cuff. And so they basically cut out the area that was torn and said that it will regenerate and regrow on its own. He had quite a few bone spurs that they removed and then he had an extra, um, like a, I don't know, extension on his clavicle or something. So they shaved that off. But um, he did really well. And, I mean, they didn't repair the rotator cuff. So they told him as soon as the, um, the nerve block wears off in the next day or so, they want him to start using his arms. So that's great. Let me get a sip of water. So, um, we kept the boys, uh, I kept the boys, they came over Tuesday night, Nathan had basketball games yesterday, so, um, I took him and Malachi to those, and then, um, Kimberly did meet us for the second one, she'd gotten Dwayne home and settled, and so she came and met us for the second one. It's been raining really, really hard here every day. And so, like, between games, Malachi and I left to go get pick up McDonald's just to get something to eat because um, the game straddled lunchtime, and it was pouring. I mean, pouring. So that's what's been going on here. Um, I, made some, I made some homemade pita chips, Tuesday because I know that they like those and so I had like four pita four pita breads and uh, I cut each of one of those into eight pieces so it's 32 chips <laughs> I ate probably four like when I got done making them and was putting them in the container um, just because they wouldn't fit so I ate about four myself and then they came over Malachi didn't even realize they were there until probably right before supper. And he went to the container and they were almost all gone. Nathan just inhales food like crazy. He's a growing boy, big boy. So um, it's just insane. So does anyone else watch Line of Duty? on um, BritBox or whatever ITV is where I think it plays originally but um, we've been watching that I started watching it a while back and gotten I had gotten all caught up and then 
before season, I think we're on season six. So before five came out, I asked my husband if he wanted to watch it because I thought he would like it. So I watched it again with him until that point. We watched last season together. And then now they're dropping uh, a new episode every Tuesday on Amazon Prime. And they keep you hanging on, I'm telling you. It's like you never know. Oh, gosh, it's just craziness. So if you haven't watched it, if you like British, um, UK type um, crime police shows, um, that one's a pretty good one. It's about um, an anti-corruption unit. So check it out if you haven't watched it yet. Okay, so what have I been stitching? I um, stitched a little bit yesterday on... Um, units for the sailboat quilt and so what I'm working on currently is this row right here this border with the little fish blocks so that's what I'm making all those half square triangles for so um, I, I have almost all the half square triangles made I just have one more color to make and then I can start putting all the blocks together, but I did finish the red ones. And so I started putting um, the red blocks together. And so, you know, the half square triangles are here, 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 a square here. And then you add triangles to the block and it makes the little fish block. So that's quite a few of these and it's, you know, each each one is quite a bit of components, so um, it just takes time. So that's what I've been working on with that, and I'll probably work on that when I get done recording. I need to leave in about about two hours to go into town. I have my um, massage appointment today and then my stitching group this afternoon, and so I won't be home, so I'll do stuff on the machine before I leave this morning. So I'm still stitching on my weekly focus piece, which is Linen and Threads Mystery 2021. I did get the little bird finish, finished, and um, yeah, got him done. He's got he's got a little um, base type thing that he's sitting on here that I still have to do, but. I usually stitch on each piece about a half an hour a day, sometimes a little less. So yesterday was Wardy Wednesday, and I did bring this to stitch on at Nathan's Game. I didn't get very much done, but I'm working on this homegrown pattern. Um, and it worked out really good because this is my Wardy Wednesday for the whole month. And, you know, I usually bring it to basketball games because I have it outlined and just have to fill in. And so I got just a very little bit done on the M. I actually brought this to Quilt Guild on Tuesday and worked on it as well that day. So just, I mean, hardly anything. But the M's getting close to being filled in, so... And this is a 14 count uh, white whitewash whitewash board by Fabric Flare using the call for DMC's two strands. And that's um, Fat Quarter Shop Stitch Quarterly, their very first one. You get that little bag, the pattern, the floss, the cloth, and a little notion and a needle case. So uh, that's a pretty cool, um, a pretty cool club. And then I still am working, I worked on this yesterday. I will put this away for a little bit and work on Shine On. And so this is the Flea Market Flowers. So I got, um, the last couple of days I got the leaves done, the stem and the leaves on this flower. I did this flower, started the stem. And then I came up here and filled in some of the petals. I outlined, I, I outline them all and then fill in. And if I have enough floss, I finish it. If I don't, then like this one, I just left it outlined. 
I'm loving this piece so much on this cloth. And then my magazine challenge piece is the little um, summer cutting scissors keep. So I've got some more stitches put in on that. And some of the purples is a little light. It's like they call for like lavender. And they kind of all just look the same color, but I think when I'm looking at it in the camera, it looks a little, you can distinguish it a little bit better. But anyway, I think it's beautiful, so I'm going to keep going. And I will stitch on that all week this week. And then Tuesday for um, Timely Tuesday, I stitched on my little Springs Messenger pin keep. This is Scattered Seed Samplers, their um, Little Messenger Handwork Club. I, I don't know if there's spots left or not, but I'll link the Etsy um, item below. And so I finished off the lettering right here and then started outlining the tree trunk. So I'm, I'm fairly confident that I can um, get this finished on the Tuesdays that are left in June. Because once I get the, once I get the trunk outlined, it'll just be filling it in and then doing the little leaves, which don't take long at all. And then the words up here. So let's see, 10, 17 two more Tuesdays, so three more, three more. Yeah, today's the 10th, so 8, 15, 22, 29, yeah. So I'll have three more Tuesdays to work on that, so hopefully I'll be able to get that, um, get it done. Um, I didn't grab Elizabeth Weston. I have her on my list, but I didn't grab her to show, so I didn't, you know, get very much done on that. I didn't stitch on it at all yesterday, um, but Tuesday I had finished both Tuesdays and Wednesdays um, goals, and so um, it's just, you know, another over one word, so I'll, you know, show that to you on Saturday when I film again. So, um I hope you all have a nice couple of days, and I'll see you later. Bye. Hey, guys. Um, I just wanted to jump on um, back on real quick with you. Um, my husband just texted and let us know that his sister had called him this morning and told him that um, that we might want to have go bags ready. Um, his mom is still losing blood and getting weaker by the day. So, um just, you know, pray for us, pray for her, pray for her kids. Um, my daughters are her only grandchildren, so um, anyway, if we do have to leave suddenly, uh, I'll probably upload what I have. And so if, you know, if there's like an abrupt ending, if this is the last you see of me this week, um, you know, then I just, I want to get it up so that, you know, all of you who are praying for her can know what's going on and pray for her. So I don't want to hold it until we get back if we do have to leave. So anyway, I just wanted to add that on and, um, you know, let you know what's going on. So I appreciate every one of you and um, hopefully I'll see you again soon. Thanks.